right. Uh, thank you, guys. Um, really appreciate it, Casey and Matt, for saying those words. Um, it's a great honor to be here. Uh, even greater honor, as everybody's talked about, being a part of this class. Um, Christine, I actually got to know decently well, even though our past didn't cross very much when they did. Um, actually got some time to spend each other. And what everybody says about her is first class, um, and it's true. Uh, she always worked extremely hard, but she looked out for everybody else. Um, whether got to spend some time in Austin, a little bit in actually in Arlington Heights, um, and uh, she deserves everything and more than what she's gotten. So very, very honored to be up here, part of that. <clears throat> so yeah, the other two, Bruce, gosh, I could tell stories for forever about Bruce. All great, and Kevin's exactly right. He's a person that is misunderstood, but he's also a person that he needs to know you. And when he knows you, he knows how to get to you. And um, whether it's bad news, and believe me, he's given bad news. And, and one stands out to me. I remember in, in Confederations Cup, we're in Mexico. And we come in at halftime, we're down, I mean, we're, we're even. And everybody's sort of sitting back and not necessarily positive or negative. And Bruce comes in and he goes, McBride. I'm not going to do a Bruce voice because so many people do a better Bruce voice. He goes, you better get your head out of your and do something for this team. I'm giving you five minutes on that second half. And if you don't come out and do something, hold the ball for crying out loud. That, that's the least you could do for us. I'm pulling you if you don't do that. So it, it goes on for another two or three minutes. And I go in the locker and, and I go into the bathroom. I close the door. I don't have to go to the bathroom. But I just start talking to myself. What are you doing? You've got to start working harder doing stuff for the team. But that's Bruce. He's quick to give you a compliment. He's quick to tell you when you need to know you need to do something. And that's what you want as a player. You don't want someone to sit back and tell you all the good things. Go behind your back and do something else. Uh, Bob, Bob's led a legacy of... of true commitment, and um, his record shows for itself. He's been someone that has been um, so influential in, in so many of the players. Having a chance to spend uh, a little bit of my end of my career in Chicago and, and being there and, and seeing tradition, honor, that's him. And, and he did that for not only the fire, but for the United States national team. So again, very honored to be up here. Um, the, it's, this is difficult for me in the sense that I don't like talking about myself. Um, and yet I'm very honored to be up here and, and to be a part of this and to have this very not so attractive jacket, but very meaningful <laughs> jacket. <laughs> <laughs> See, I, in the earlier years, was it different fabric? Because this thing, I'm telling you, you don't need to iron this, do you? <laughs> right? Uh, but needless to say, so honored. Um, you know, my brother touched on it. U.S. soccer, um, Sunil, Dan, Jay, uh, Brian Ramiti. Amy, who has been uh, so helpful to us, they've always been there um, when we've asked for something or we needed something, and, and we're truly grateful. Uh, this experience this weekend allowing, uh, I think we have 20 people all here, uh, and I will mention some in, in depth um, a bit later, almost all of them actually. It's something that stands out. And it's, it's something that players will always remember. If you look out for your family, uh, whether it's 
you know, a distant relative to your wife. Uh, it's something that will, you'll walk away from the game knowing how precious it is and how much you care. So thank you for that. Uh, we are grateful. I would want to start with thank yous, because that's probably my, my, my easiest way of talking, uh, because uh, I am so thankful to be here. And I wouldn't be here for um, anywhere near here if it wasn't for so many people. And uh, the first two are people that are above us, and God and Jesus, and the experiences that I've been allowed to uh, have. And at certain times in my career, there's been crossroads or there's been uh, things, the question marks of what to do. And it just seemed like he put people in my life that allowed me to grow and, and get better. And, and listen, not all of them were uh, clear to me at the time. When I got a chance to reflect on it later, you see it. So thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus. The very, very uh, important for me. Sticky paper. I need to start by thanking my wife. And Christine, when I heard your speech, I'm like, maybe it was best to put my wife and my kids last because I, I might get emotional. Um, I did in my retirement speech. I'm going to try and hold it together. But when I talked about, you know, crossroads, I met my wife. Um, I was on loan at Preston in England and thought I was going to be Mr. Tough Guy. So the first game, we were in a FA Cup game, and I wanted to show the fans that I'll go into any challenge. So I went into this challenge and ended up not losing the challenge. Of course, I didn't win the ball, but I didn't get knocked down, but people saw that I wasn't afraid. Um, from that, that one challenge, about uh, three days later, we played another game. 90 minutes, it was in Sheffield. Played Sheffield Wednesday, we won the game. I come off the field and I pull up my, my shirt and my teammates go, whoa, I was like, what's wrong? He was like, dude, your arm. And it wasn't dude, okay, that's in England. <laughs> Something, mate, whatever. Um, and I look down, my arm is twice the size of this arm. Well, that led to me flying back, angioplasty, and getting the blood clot out. I put on blood thinners, and they said, listen, you can't do any type of contact for the next three months. You can run, you can lift, do all that, but you're going to be on blood thinners, so go home. It just so happened to be two days before Thanksgiving, and that time at home, next day, I met my future wife, and we're able to spend a whole month together, uh, and if... I'm sure all of us can look at how our relationship started in life. And this is not high school. This is 27, 28 years old. And you get to spend a whole month every day with that person. You know. And thankfully, I met the most amazing woman who is an amazing mother who always supported me. And I'm forever grateful. So thank you, honey. <clears throat> to my children, Ashley. By the way, Ashley, her and her team, they won state championship in cheerleading uh, last weekend. Just gonna... Ella uh, and Freya. I love you girls, and I want the best for you. And I've got a little thing for you at the end of the speech, but thank you for always cheering me on. Anytime I got to look up in the stands and seeing you at the railing, waving at me, whether it was Fulham with Ashley and Ella, and on to the fire with all three of you, Freya, standing there, I'm thinking, don't, don't, don't jump, okay? It's a long way down. Um, I will always cherish it. What I'll cherish even more is now the chance to be your fans in whatever you do. And I love you, so thank you very much for that. 
to my mom, and my brother touched on it, um, touched on figure skating. Yep. <laughs> uh, we were in a lot of stuff. Uh, racquetball, do you remember racquetball? I was actually in racquetball. We were actually pretty good, but uh, she allowed us to express ourselves and um, really challenge ourselves, but also be there to, to help us through the hard times, but give us enough of an incentive to really find our way. And um, whether it was the passion she showed uh, through how much she worked to allow us to experience those things, down to the times when she needed to pull us aside and let us know things weren't right. It was a job in itself. In the same time, as my brother touched on, she worked a full-time job um, and really provided for, for all of us. So mom, thank you uh, for helping me be the person that I was growing up to be and to the person that I am now. I love you. My brother Matt, as you got to see here, first of all, he's a great lawyer. Uh, he was sort of um, not giving himself enough credit. There was a period when he was my agent where I called him from that same Confederations Cup when Casey and I were, our, were first roommates. And I had a scenario go down where I was offered a large sum of money, more, more, almost double what I was making in MLS, cash, to basically have a pre-contract. And I get on the phone, and here is this amazing offer, and he's like, what are you doing? That, that, that's not you. You have to remember who you are. And who you want to be. And if you don't think that that team is going to want you three years from now, why would they give you this money? And it's a tough thing when you're a player and you're making 50000 a year and you have this opportunity. It's a tough thing to turn down, but the advice that my brother gave me not only there, but throughout my career, his indelible on um, who I am and who I uh, am presented to you. So uh, thank you, Matt. To my sister, Megan. Um, boy. So Meg, Meg and I went to high school together. Um, and Meg was a great soccer player herself, but she was this amazing talent of everything she did. And whether it was social, whether it was cheerleading, whether it was dance, whether it was soccer. And I'd have this conversation with my mom all the time and I'd be like, mom, she's not trying. She doesn't practice. She doesn't, what is going on? If she did that, she would be amazing. Maybe Anson would be interested. And, um, you know, my mom would always be like, listen, she's enjoying her life, and she's turned out to be an amazing person, and she was an amazing person before, don't get me wrong. <laughs> but I'll never forget when I came home from college, and my sister was, was playing soccer, and all of a sudden I saw this girl that was like sticking a toe in at every challenge or you know, not necessarily tackling as hard. And she was crushing girls, slide tackling, getting in there. And I just saw the growth of uh, a, a person that was just this amazingly happy, loving, always caring, always looking out for me. And she always looked out for me, even though I always looked out for her too. Um, and, and now she has an amazing husband, an amazing family. It's great. And thank you for being here. I love you, Meg. Uh, I'm, I'm going long on my thank yous. I know that. I'm sorry. Um, to my brother, Tim. Tim's gone through um, so much to get to where he is. He's a captain in the Air Force. He just graduated from weapons school, uh, which is basically top gun for 
uh, the Air Force. He graduated top of his class for his plane. And he did that all through uh, going to college to, to be a pilot, realized wouldn't have enough money to pay for lessons, drops out three months into college, enlists in the Air Force. He's in the back of the plane for four years, goes through another year of prep school, goes through four more years of the Air Force, and they tell him he can pick whatever plane he wants to fly. He says he wants to fly the plane that he was in the back of. And it just shows the determination and the character of who he is. Um, it just so happens that his wife is also a pilot of the Air Force, Vicki, and um, just so happy for them. Thank you for being here, Tim. Love you. To my dad, to my, my dad, it took a long time for my dad to really embrace soccer, embrace me playing soccer. Um, he thought I could play professional football. He thought I could play professional baseball. Quite honestly, I highly doubt any of those. But when he finally did realize that this was something that I was passionate about, that something I loved, he became a big fan. And now I'll get the odd email, the odd phone call, and he'll start giving me advice, start asking me, how could this person do this? How could, and it's just great to see that um, you've, you've grown to love the sport, Dad, and I love you, and thank you for being here. All right. Listen, a few more thank yous. Um, gone through. I, I need to thank my wife's parents, John and Ann Lundstrom. Listen, a lot of people, they're the in-laws, they roll their eyes, they think, oh boy, they're a pain. Well, these two aren't. They're so amazing to, to myself, of course, to her, their daughter, to our kids. And even though Ann suggests that I wear a coat if it's too cold, like when we got to the airport and I wasn't wearing a coat this trip, she goes, Brian, where's your coat? <laughs> She's always treated me like a son, and so is John. And um, thank you. And thank you for always being there for our family and for me. So I love you. I, I can't go without thanking um, all the doctors, all the trainers, <laughs> and the staff of uh, our teams that we were a part of um, throughout my career, throughout um, before I was a professional. They really work hard. They don't get a lot of accolades. They make people feel better. And uh, I know, I don't know if any of them are here, but I can tell you, without you guys, we would be on the sideline wondering what the heck we would be doing and not figuring much out besides trying and, and wanting to play soccer. So thank you for that. The, the coaches that have influenced me are vast. And I don't think it's fair to, to really talk about all of them, because I know I've thanked a lot and, and talked long, but the, my high school coach, John Erfurt, was a huge influence on me. So all your coaches out there know that what you do is important. It doesn't matter if it's a professional level, if it's at a youth level, if it's at an adult level, it's indelible. Um, he's, he taught me a lot of things, and one of the things he taught me was soccer is exactly what Casey was saying. It's a moment. Try and be the person you want to be, and that meant making sure I was studying, making sure I was doing schoolwork. When I met him, I, my mom would tell you, I couldn't be interested in doing homework. I couldn't be interested in anything, and, and he set me straight, and I'll forever be grateful. Um, I've talked a little bit about Bruce. Um, he, he's a special guy. And 
not only special, and, and Kevin said it right, not only special for the field, but uh, the lasting impression on me, but he's also had a lasting impression on my family. And that doesn't happen very much. I'd like to thank David Moyes, uh, Chris Coleman, both giving me the opportunity to play in Europe. And Joe Clark. When I went to St. Louis, I thought soccer was all about attacking. Growing up in Arlington Heights, we'd do 45 minutes of shooting, then we'd do 45 minutes of playing. And when I got to St. Louis, that wasn't the way soccer was played. Training was about understanding, small games, movement off the ball. And I had a little bit of that from the youth side of it with ODP and some U20 experience. But uh, Joe always wanted you to know why you were doing things. And that is so important. And, and on top of that, Joe is a, an amazing person, is an amazing person. So thank you to Joe. And lastly, I, I'd like to leave everybody with a thought, and especially my daughters. There's always going to be something you want to achieve. Make sure you don't come up short because you didn't put in the effort to reach that achievement. We can always improve and we can always learn. And I hope and I pray because you know mommy and I will be there guiding you, but we want you to achieve and learn and improve. Thank you very much. Thank you.